and welcome to the Pottervision podcast. The podcast where every two weeks, myself, Lucas Kirkby, and a man on my screen, you might know him, it's Tom Lawrenson. We look at a chapter of the Harry Potter books and we use them as inspiration, as they say in Spain and France in different pronunciations, for a conversation. This week we're on episode 101 and... Uh, we're having a good time already. We've not even started. We've just had a meeting, haven't we, Tom? Oh, yeah. I called the meeting myself. I said, Lucas, will you meet me to discuss the Potter Vision 2023 tour? He kept calling it back further and further. I said, meet me at 10 a.m. At 10 to, te- 10 to 10, cowboy time, I get a text message saying, make it later. I go, fair enough. Let's make it one. He then says, make it ten past one. I call him, he's not ready. Excuse me. I can't be asked anymore. Go on, what are you saying? This brother? is a classic case of mistaken identity. It was Tom that texted me at uh, 9.53, I believe it was, telling me that he can't do it at 10, can he do it later? So I text 1pm, question mark. Then at 12.50, I text him again because he's not replied. How about 1pm? He says 10 past 1. And then I ring him at 10 past 1 and he has the audacity to tell me that I couldn't wait a minute longer to ring him because I rang him bang on 10 past 1. A mere three hours and 10 minutes later than originally planned. (laughs) It was funny because he goes, he goes, you're a cheeky shit, aren't you? (laughs) He is. If you think Tom's a cheeky shit, write in and tell us. Yeah? <laughs> it's me that sees the email, so uh, it'll make me feel good. Yeah. The thing is... We had a meeting I because was, uh... Uh, we want lots of people to come uh, to our tour. And uh, we didn't actually discuss this on the meeting, but one of the things we're going to do is tell you about it on the podcast. So if you want to come to see us, we've got so many dates. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read them out aloud for you. We're going to be in Chorley, Liverpool, Carlisle, Edinburgh, Dundee, Glasgow, Newcastle, Scarborough, Sheffield, Telford, Leeds, Manchester, Birmingham, Leicester, Belfast, London, Brighton, Southampton, Swansea, Denby and Hollyhead. That's right, Hollyhead. So we would love for you to come and see us. Uh, most of the ticket links are all available on pottervision.com. And hey, it's a lovely Christmas prezi that you could buy somebody. Yeah, Take your nana out for once. Take your nana out. And it's funny, the last half of that tour, I've never heard of. Hollyhead, Swansea, Denby. Huh? Huh? He'd never even heard of Wales Where before I, I met him. Where am I going? Swansea's like the second biggest city in Wales or something. I call Wales Goo Goo Gaga Land. Yeah. Because everyone in Wales is a baby. Um, yeah. And they're bonkers. If you're from Wales and you agree, text in. <laughs> 88 to 91 FM. <laughs> Text into the yeah. to the radio. I've <laughs> tapped in eighty eight to ninety one FM, but nothing's coming through. I don't know why it's a brummy that got confused with that. It's the accent I went for. Uh, but yeah, we're excited to go on tour, well, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to be doing uh, the same show again. I think there's a, <laughs> the issue is there's a lot of people in the United Kingdom, who haven't seen Pot yeah. Vision yet, so we need to keep touring it till everyone's seen. Last year was good. We had 230 in Belfast. Wow, amazing. But in Portsmouth, we had... Peterborough. No, in Peterborough, we had we had 11 people. No good. Um... Yeah. Yeah, we'd love to see you there. And hey, um, this year, guaranteed already... Uh, is a new two minutes of material that you might not have seen, uh, unless you're in Edinburgh, in which you have seen it. But if you weren't in Edinburgh and you've seen the show before, there's a guaranteed extra two minutes. And who knows, before February, we might have written 
another two minutes of extra material. But if you do go, Ed- if you did go to Edinburgh, and that was the first time you'd seen it, there'll be more bits in anyway because w- we were forced to cut things out of the Edinburgh show because the Potter Vision boys were overrunning. Mm. We had too much comedy packed into an hour. And we had to uh, cut bits off. It's not so much comedy. It's it's more of me and you laughing at ourselves on stage. Yeah, that's true. Like, keeled over, slapping our knees, laughing at the things we do. Well, we did Hull, like, we did Hull uh, a few weeks ago. It's supposed to be an hour show. I think it took us about an hour and a half. Because the audience were having so much fun with us, weren't they? <clears throat> yeah, got to a point where they were laughing at us and it upset you and me we had to go back in backstage for a cry for a bit and then we came back out and finished the show we had to send jed salisbury back on to do an improvised extra five minutes while we composed ourselves in the toilets (laughs) yeah (laughs) well them droplets all down the front of your trousers boys they're tears we've been crying tears of joy that we're back yeah. Hey, do you know what the real word for earwax is? You what, sorry? Do you know what the real word for earwax is? Oh, I'd love to know. I shall tell you. Yeah. It's called, like, ceramen. 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 There you go, it's Saruman. That that <laughs> that guy from uh, Lord of the Rings is in your ears. It's Saruman. Oi, you've got too much Saruman in your ears. Excuse me. You heard, you heard what I said. Saruman. Yeah. Too much of it, or not enough, depending on your inclination. So, Tom, have you had a nice couple of weeks? What have you been up to? Oh, yes. The last thing we did, we did the live recording of the 100th episode Spectacular, didn't we? Mm. Yeah. At the 100th episode, one of our Patreon uh, members was there, Vicky Halster. Oh, yeah. And she said, what are you doing this weekend? And I said, I don't think you're on that tier that you can ask me that question. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. No, but I said, oh, me and Vicky have got a mutual friend called Mark coming up, and uh, he lives in London, and he came up, and then I was on a night out in Stockport with Vicky Alstead, and I charged her a pound every time she had to ask me a question. Hey, that's good. So listen, all you have to do, because there's that rule, isn't there, like the six degrees of separation. So if you can find yeah. some kind of connection to Tom via a mutual friend in London or, I don't know, a pet dog, you can actually spend time with him in the real world. Or just knock on my fucking front door, come round. Yeah, knock on his front door. He lives somewhere... You, bloody hell, this landlord, he goes abroad, owning country. You're like one of them foreign landlords. Own- oh, that's why no one can buy a house. People like you ordering properties. I'm trying to sell it. Somebody's <laughs> trying to buy it at the moment. They're just trying to get a mortgage. Hey, we never told that's anyone about the, the man in the carvery, did we? So we did our we did our live show, episode 100. And we think, right, we've got a bit of time in between going to Hull after recording in Manchester. Tom had never had in his life a Toby Carvery. So I thought, right, today's the day to put that wrong to rights. Right? If you don't know what a Toby Carvery is, but if you're, if, you're, if you're a foreigner, it's essentially Thanksgiving dinner every day whenever you want it. You know, it's Thanksgiving dinner in the form of a buffet. Right, you pay and you can go up, get your meat, get your veg, do what you want, right? So I I go to pay for my carvery to get me two tickets. I say, two carveries, please, and two large refillable drinks. She goes, right, that's, uh, I don't know, it's like 20 quid or something. 22 pounds. So I give him some money. All right, so he opens up the till, puts the money in, gives me the change, and then he does a hip thrust. And closes the till with his penis. <laughs> it's like John Travolta closing the till door. I was like, oh. I've never seen that in my life. 
and I, and he did it for everybody. It wasn't just for me. For everybody, he closed the till with his penis. Yeah, I couldn't wait to tell Tom when I came back. Mm. And we told everyone in Hull, didn't we? It was interesting. I went over the bar. I went over to the bar to ask him a question. I had to go over to the bar and I said, "Excuse me." I said, "Because it's like bonfire night." Uh, do you think there will be any like accidents with the fireworks? And he said, hopefully not. And then he goes, touch wood, and banged on the bar with his penis twice. <laughs> no, he did. <laughs> Can you believe that? No, I can't. It never <laughs> happened, listeners. He did close the till drawer with his penis, but he did not bang it on the bar. That's where Toby Carvery draw the line. They're a very sophisticated <laughs> company. Yeah, if you read their terms and conditions on the website, they said our staff may close till drawers with the penis. They will never bang it on the bar. Um, and then there was a television at the corner of the room, and that advert yeah. came on. You know, for that that wood, uh, that pine furniture like advert that's oh, on yeah. TV. Oh yeah, Oak Furniture Land. Yeah, it's like, and then it goes, like, "You got a knock." On wood, and when the cl- when the two knocks came on, he knocked his penis on the bar again. Yeah, and then tell you what, later on there was a there was an advert for Asda, and uh, when someone said that, that's Asda price, he swung, <laughs> he swung, <laughs> he swung his penis round his hip and patted himself on the bottom <laughs> twice. You're disgusting, you are. And we won't tell you what he did for Sheila's wheels. <laughs> so, <laughs> you dirty yeah. boy. So anyway, uh, so, so that's one piece of big news from us this week. <laughs> Isn't that bloke in Toby Carberry in, in Chatterton Park? Boy, could he swing that penis. <laughs> hey, I've been to a, um, a fancy... Studio launch a couple of weeks ago. Tell, tell me about more. This. Tell me more. Did I get very far? Yeah. Well, Martina's brother, as you may or may not know, is a professional <clears throat> photographer. Right? We'll, we'll give them a shout out there. The Salted Almond Agency. Check them out on uh, Instagram and all that. They do cool photo shoots and uh, stuff like that. Loads of cool photography stuff. And uh, they've got a brand new studio in Munich that they've all done out. And so they were having a launch party. Uh, And I've had permission to tell this story from Martina's brother, Pascal. So uh, we go to this launch party and family are there, friends are there. We're all having a good time, right? There's a buffet, there's music, there's drinks. About two hours into this party, this elderly couple come in. They must be like 60s, 70s. So they come in, and Pascal's like, I don't know who they are. They've not been invited. But it does say on the front door, welcome to the party. So we thought, well, you know, whatever, we might just let them stay. So they start eating from the buffet. They start eating from the buffet. Next thing, this woman starts putting buffet food into her handbag. And she's... On, honest to God, she takes about 50% of the buffet with her into <laughs> in her handbag. Next minute, she's sat on this bloke's knee, her husband, eating the buffet from her handbag. And then when, <laughs> and then for, for like a hint, uh, Pascal moves the buffet to the other side of the room. And then the man follows him to see where the buffet is going. So that's a bit weird. Next, next minute, another bloke comes in, elderly bloke, and he just goes to the to- he just goes to the toilet, but he leaves the door open. I had to shut the door because everyone could everyone could see him having a wee. I had to go shut the door so so uh, we couldn't see his old. You know, we've talked enough about penises today, but uh, I had to close the door on him. What do you make of that? What the fuck is going on over there? I, I, I think Germany is now Gaga Gugu Land as well. 
You can't yeah. be letting dirty old, and for the lack of a better word, scrotes come in to <laughs> yeah. a buffet, right, yeah. and start stealing and pissing. Yeah. That's what the elderly do. They piss and steal. Yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, it was a lovely evening and I've got to say, uh, a fantastic this, launch. This further solidifies, solidifies my opinion that I hate old people because they do things like that. Well, I think they just wandered home from the pub that night and then suddenly they were uh, they were having a buffet. Let me tell you something. I couldn't believe how much they took home with them. Pascal was effectively ripped off, was he not? Mm, yeah. They f- they f- well, they fucked him off. I hope next Sunday he goes round to their house and has a bit of their Sunday dinner. Let me tell you that. Don't be fair. But... I don't know if you know this, but I have also been ripped off. Have you? What's happened? I don't know if you can see, but there's like damp coming in from the chimney. And it's been like that ever for like over a year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can I've see it. Yeah. I've had a roofer come round, paid them handsomely and promptly. They've been, been up on the roof. Don't think they did any work. I think they might have done a little dance around the chimney or something. Or maybe they just ate their packed lunch up there and looked at the sunset. Um, but it's continued <laughs> to be wet for over a year. We get them back out. They've waited a long time to eat their packed lunch, haven't they? We got <laughs> a packed lunch and <laughs> watching the sunset. <laughs> right. It's winter. It can the sun will set for. It's winter, isn't it? You wake up late, it's completely doable. Um let me tell you this. They keep sending the same stupid, and for the lack of a better word, cunt round to go up there. Right. And like, they might eat, this man has wasted an hour of my time showing me pictures of doggies on his phone. <laughs> yeah. Look, these are my dogs. And he's like in bed with like a, a black dog. And you're like, what's going on there? Yeah. What's happening there? Who took that photo? <laughs> Send me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping that. I'm, I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that. I think that's from a double vision episode, actually. I'm keeping that. Is it? If you want to know what that is, I think that might have been one of the hardest I've ever laughed in my life. You got to sign up to the Patreon. I'm keeping that. I was keeled keeping over. that. To know what we're on about, you're gonna have to pay money, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I've been uh, I've been in my job teaching. Hang on a minute, and, you think uh, I finished with my story? All right, go on, carry on then. So it continues to be wet. Right? So we said, I say we. I didn't do any of this. Lucy called up the man and said, instead of sending the same silly Billy round, who yeah, uh, I think might be making things worse up there. Please come round and look at yourself. So the actual guy comes around, looks up, he goes, oh, yeah. So basically, there's been a misdiagnosis of what was wrong with the chimney. Right. Yeah. Um, there'd been a misdiagnosis of what was wrong with the chimney. So I'm like, oh, great. And so he goes, yep, it'll be £350. I'm like, oh, what about the £750 we've already paid you? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> So, we're not going to, we're going to have to, well, Lucy complained and he reduced it to 300. But he said what he'll do, he'll throw in a pair of uh, um, hats in the shape of cones, like tall yeah. cone hats. And in- yeah. instead of dunce on them, they say cunts. So, oh, that's good. we're like the dumb cunts who let people take advantage yeah. of us. Yeah. We'll take 50 quid off for you, and you'll get two bendy bullies. Hey, how about that? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I hope it gets sorted soon. It is looking rather damp, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah. And uh, we go, uh, we said, is that everything? And he goes, oh, actually, in this. La, 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 la. 
Imagine somebody listening to episode one of the Potter Vision podcast and then thinking, oh, I wonder what they're talking about <clears throat> in a hundred episodes time. It's still damp. Well, it's the damp podcast. I'm, all, I'd, all I'm going to say, it would be a crying shame if, you know, the roofers go up there together and they both fall off. That'd be a crying shame, that, wouldn't it? It'd be awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hope that yeah. doesn't happen. I mean, genuinely. Yeah. And if that is that the end of the story? And if that one thousand and fifty pounds happens to be in the breast pocket, I may have to take that out there before I call an ambulance. Yeah, yeah, you might have to. Yeah, ambulance fee. <laughs> uh, yeah, ambulance call commission. Yeah, fair enough. Anyway, what what are you trying to go on about? You got any some bullshit news for me? Oh, well, I was going to talk about the, my job. I'm teaching, aren't I? And I've been enjoying teaching art. As you know, I am uh, hopeless at, at art, drawing, painting, whatever you want to do. But I'm teaching it. Yeah, I'm an expert to these eight and nine-year-olds on the subject of art. So uh, we're doing a painting. And um, we've got like bits of newspaper in the back. So I hand everyone out a piece of newspaper to put on the table... And then you can paint over it and not make a mess. Mm. So, they're, they're all painting, blah, blah, blah. One of them goes to me, Mr. Kirkby, Mr. Kirkby. They go, uh, who, are, who are all these old people on my newspaper? And they were painting over the obituaries section in the newspaper. <laughs> I'm just glad they didn't colour any of them in. That's all I can say. But I like to stick on, um, I like to stick on Bob Ross videos in the background. So this week they were doing warm and cool colours, right? So I stick on a video of Bob Ross painting a lovely mountain summit, yeah, in the, behind a lake. And the kid puts their hand up, and you know, bless them, they've got no sense of uh, time or the world. They go, "Do you have a video of Leonardo da Vinci doing the Mona Lisa?" I've not. That's not on YouTube, unfortunately. Uh, Pop that on, son. Pop that on, son. Get in the car. How old is this fucking kid? This lovely child that I teach oh, yeah. is uh, between eight to nine years old. He's an in between. Well, definitely. He's an in between. Yeah. But let me tell you this. How did he know who painted the Mona yeah. Lisa? I know he knew that, but didn't know how long ago it was. Yeah. Or that they didn't have videos. Those are the kinds of gaps in knowledge I'm there to fill. Yeah, I've got me polyfiller of facts <clears throat> that I put into their brains. And that's my job. Yeah. Well, we were, do <laughs> we were doing uh, verbs the other day. So I was like, right, can anyone tell me uh, a verb? So someone said, run. So I said, right, running. All right, so I run, he runs, she runs. All good. They're all repeating after me. Yeah. So go, right, give me another word. So someone says, help. I said, helping. I help. She helps. They help. Blah, blah, blah. They repeat after me. I go, someone give me another word. Someone says, dog. And I said, dogging. <laughs> I said, dogging is not a verb. Uh, even though I knew it was, but I wouldn't like to admit that to the children. <laughs> so I had a little giggle to myself that, uh, that a kid had said dogging as a verb. Mr. Kirkby's giggling again. <laughs> He's always giggling. Papa, why does dogging make Mr. Kirkby giggle? <laughs> Ooh, Papa laughing now. <laughs> Mama, why is Papa laughing about doggy? <laughs> it's like a little children's book, this, isn't it? I might write that. Laughing at Doggy by Lucas Kirkby. <laughs> hey, it's been very smutty this episode so far, and this is a family podcast, isn't it? 
You, you listen to this podcast with your mummy, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your granny, your cousin, yeah. your sister, your brother, your baby. And you may remember, after all them have had the bath, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Bagsy not going in after uncle. Who's, who's ever forgot that? Bagsy not going in after uncle. <laughs> he leaves scum on the top. <laughs> no. Anyway, so All right. Uh, do you have any more updates? Yeah, let's just take a moment. Hmm. I love our listeners. Yeah, I do actually. Platonically. I love them romantically. Oh. As long as they're all over the age of, I don't know, 25. <laughs> Lovely. Tom uses the same rule as most shops and off licenses do. Age 25, yeah? Think 25 if you love your listeners. Think 25. Any younger, no love for you, sorry. You can have a bit of love with a roast with your mum and dad. <laughs> Um, but nothing more, nothing less. Love is the best. <laughs> you done any uh, Christmas shopping at Kirkby? Yeah, I've done some online Christmas shopping. Because uh, obviously I'm when in the Germany fuck are you and I want all my again? presents to be in Wales. Yeah, so I've ordered some bits and bobs. And uh, I'll probably do some last minute stuff when I'm... Because I'm back in Wales in two weeks to start panto season. Two so weeks. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of weeks anyway. Get me Christmas shopping finished. I was thinking, I'd, I'll, 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 I'm, are they sold out, them tickets? Panto? Mm. A few of them are, but there's some tickets still available if anyone wants to uh, come and see me. I was thinking about arranging a pot vision Panto uh, thing. We uh, all I'd go. love that, like a school trip. Yeah, we all go to Lucas's uh, panto, and we is it like what? And we all watch him, and when he comes out, we all cheer like mad. <laughs> That'd be lovely. Well, yeah, it's on from uh, Christmas Eve until the sixth of January. So yeah, who, who are you playing again? I'm playing. Uh, well, it's Robin Hood, and I'm Little John. Or in Welsh, Little, Johnny Bach. Little John, and what town is it in? It's in Colwyn Bay. Col- so if you're in Manchester, it's about an hour and a half from Manchester. Are we going to Colwyn Bay with Potter Vision? No, I'd love to at some point. But it's a private matter that I must discuss with the uh, the manager of the theatre. Why don't we go and do it in Penny Bin Bar? Or we do it on Colwyn Bay Beach? Or we perform at the Danielton Hotel? Yeah. Well, we're in Denby, aren't we? Denby's only about 25 minutes from Colwyn Bay. i got no idea about Google Gaga land. <laughs> well, we're in Denby Theatre tomorrow, aren't you? You've been there. How far is Colwyn Bay from my house? It's a 25-hour walk. I'm not doing that. Or should I'm we? I'm going to guess 1.32. 1 hour 32 from yours. Uh, driving... One hour twenty. Oh, quicker! Yeah. Public transport. That's not bad, is it? Public transport, two hours. Yeah, and I'll put you up for the night if you wanted. All the Potter Vision listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> me mum and dad will be fine with that. <laughs> yeah. As long as some of you don't mind being in a Sue and Derek sandwich. And um, are you doing two a day? Yeah, I think I think the ones in January are uh, are a bit more free with seats. Fizzle. If you want to come first week in January. What the fuck? I'm not doing that. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe between Christmas Day and, Box- and uh, New Year's Eve. I think there's more st- tickets sold those days. Oh, hang on. It looks to be completely sold out until the 24th of December. 
That's only when it starts. Oh. 24th of December. It's the first day sold out. Yeah, yeah we'll Christmas Eve and Boxing Day are normally dead busy, and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So maybe like, I don't know, 27th, 28th, 29th? Yeah. I hope about... all this is cut out. It's extremely boring admit. I don't think so. So listeners, you know? get in touch with Lucas um, if you want to go see. Hang on, it was your idea. Why am I organising it? <laughs> that sounds a bit narcissistic. Right, who's coming to see me? If you want to go see Lucas in pantomime how much are tickets uh i've no idea let's have a look eh this is good isn't it tom and lucas are googling yeah here we go it's like 15 quid or if you're over 60 13 quid (laughs) yeah we could that'd be good that we'll all go yeah 15 over 60 is 13 and if you're a kiddie under 16 i uh, would prefer it I would prefer it if um, Pottervision listeners use their money to buy Pottervision tickets for February. Oh, yeah. You're not buying Panto before Pottervision. <laughs> you buy Pottervision first. It's, oh, yeah. We'll yeah. have to do that. So, I don't know. Um, how can I arrange that? Oh, well, everyone... Trip. Everyone message the Potter Vision page when you want to go. And then I'll base it. Oh, I'll just pick a day. I'll pick a Saturday. You just pick a day and then whoever wants to come can come. And then we'll have a walk around Colwyn Bay. Let's have a look what's in Colwyn Bay. It's a quick we'll do bit. that. And then, if you want, and then afterwards we can all go for a meal or something. JD Weatherspoons. Yes, please. We'll go to Weathers. And support Tim Be- Martin. He needs the support, doesn't he? Ooh, the toad is permanently closed. Oh. There's a little. There's a little, yeah. Lovely. And also... Oh, be nice, that. Yeah. It's oh, organised, then. Yeah. Tom, pick a date. Let me add that to our meeting notes. Tom, make video. Tom, pick a date. Right, now that's that out of the way. Uh, are you ready for a chapter rundown? Yeah, all right. I'll, shall I do it, shall I? Uh, Harry slowly gets to the courtroom with big descriptions <laughs> along the way. I didn't know you'd read my notes. Well, that's about all that happens. It's about 20 pages. Harry goes through the Ministry of Magic. He goes up the lift into Mr Weasley's office. Then he goes down the lift to the courtroom. End of chapter. <laughs> what a it's chapter, the thickest eh? one yet. Mm. Oh, yeah. Bloody hell, but don't worry. Even though it's a bigger book, we've not stretched anything out. We've got 20 pages, him walking through a government building. Mm. It's fantastic. Yeah. I can't wait for the next chapter where he walks out again. Oh, please. <laughs> more detail. More detail. Oh, and someone walks in the lift with what kind of skin? Sallow skin, yeah. Sallow skin. Sallow skin. Yeah. Sallow yeah. skin. Um, what so colour top hat? It, it's violet. How did that person say that thing? They, oh, they said it coolly. They said, oh, someone said something coolly for once. Okay, someone said something coolly. Yeah. Oh dear, I don't know how many things in the Ministry of Magic were peacock blue. It seemed to be everything. <laughs> Robes were peacock blue. The sky was peacock blue. The paintings were peacock blue. Crooked nose. Everything was crooked peacock nose, blue. Crooked nose. What about peahen brown? How about that somewhere? Mix it up a bit. A rotund, peacock blue, peahen ro- brown. Rotund children. Rotund, rotund man. <laughs> Come on. Use a thesaurus. Yeah? Harry's insides were squirming. As to stop oh, reading. Oh, yeah. I assume he's got worms. I do. He's not wiped his bum properly, has he? <laughs> That's not how you get worms. 
Is that how you got worms or having dirty fingernails or something? Yeah, having poo under your fingernails and eating it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this episode's horrible, isn't it? Well, people DM me every week saying more toilet humor, please. More toilet humor. I want it. I want it. I want it. Yeah, that's the problem. We're all very childish in nature. We like pee pee poo poo, don't we? We like wee wee woo woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't get squirming in your stomach. You can get like a tension, can't you? But what's wriggling around in there? The uncertainty of not knowing if you are getting expelled. Do you know, like them days. I have a condition which I have self diagnosed, and it is called. ADHD, right? Oh, yeah. Attention deficit, um, something, something. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm self-diagnosed. I've got it. Yeah. Right? So when I've got a job in the afternoon, let's say I know, I don't know, I've got to go to the dentist. I can't do anything until yeah. that's out of the way. I'm like, oh, and I lay just like waiting to go and then I go then I can start my day and it's the same with Harry with this meeting until he knows whether he's getting expelled he's just in this limbo he's in this limbo yeah it's horrible yeah what's gonna happen yeah I'd be very nervous as well do you remember a day where you've been like the most nervous ever oh yes that's good. So Harry, for this court meeting, right, he's... Uh... <laughs> Do you remember a day when you've been your most right. nervous? Um, I remember being very nervous for me uh, last year's maths exam, third year maths exam. That was very nerve-wracking. Um, people... remember people being I was going to say for my wedding, but I was more excited. I don't think I was nervous for my wedding. Just very excited. Uh, it was mental. That was the morning of his thrilling. wedding... He was so excited. He was running around his bedroom without his trousers on. I had to run after him and get them on him. <laughs> I wasn't. The photographer and the videographer were in there filming it all, so there's evidence. There's evidence somewhere. I'd like to see it. When are we going to get that photo of me and you holding hands with the Do Not Disturb sign? I'm hoping very, very soon. I'm hoping very soon because uh, we're printing off the flyers and posters for the tour next week. So I really want that picture in my email before then. <laughs> well, I because um, I've added a QR code to the uh, the posters. Well, to the uh, to the flyers, and I've got this QR code maker website, and I was tempted to just put a picture of me and you in the middle of the QR code, smiling. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. So he, he goes downstairs, right? And Mrs. Weasley has prepared him jeans and a t shirt. You dress up for court, Scruffy. Jeans and a t shirt for court. Get yourself a pair of trousers, belt, shoes, shirt, tie, sorted. Right? No, I'm not saying you have to wear a jacket. Jeans and a t shirt. You're not down the skater park now, Harry. You're in court. Yeah. Funny. Um, I've told him off. Um, Sirius Black says, what my bit of advice, lad? And Harry goes, I'm listening. He says, don't lose your temper. Stick to the facts. Which is the best advice you can give someone in court if you start giving it i never fucking did that i didn't fucking do yeah. that you're gonna look guilty you're gonna look insane yeah yeah whereas whereas if you stay calm right and stick to facts yeah just calmly tell the judge there are more ways to shuffle a deck of cards than there are grains of sand on planet earth stick to facts yeah the blue whale's heart is the size of a car. Mm. Right, so if anyone is going to court, be calm and stick to the facts. <laughs> yeah? Cows have Henry VIII's wives, stomachs. divorce, beheaded, died. Yeah? 
Um, what the facts do we know? That's all we see. Dogs, are, dogs' fur is self-cleaning. Right, but did you murder her? Hey, I'm just telling you the facts. Right, I'm being calm and telling you the facts. There was once nine planets. Now there is eight. Pluto is a moon. And where were you on the night in question? The first word of the dictionary is aardvark. He's good. He's good. He's staying calm and sticking to the facts. Hang on a minute. First word of the dictionary is A. Oh. 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 Is that right? They've got him. And then the credits to Line of Duty. Perjury. Lying in court. Off with his head. Yeah. I'm serious. I don't, I don't even know if this is a joke, but he threatens to kill Amelia Bones if she sentences Harry to expulsion. I'm going to kill Amelia Bones. I'm going to kill her. Susan Bones will become motherless. Do you want that? Subo. Amelia Bones? I've been listening to a lot of Susan Boyle lately. Isn't that interesting? Have you? Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, well, she's a bloody chart topper, isn't she? I was at work in one of my famous moods. And I was like, do you know what would make yeah. me feel happy? A bit of old Lang Syne. And so on my Spotify, yeah. I put in Old Lang Syne and Susan Boyle came up as like one of the top performers of the song. And I was listening yeah. listen to that on repeat a few times. Uh, it's very nice. Yeah. Do you know what? That song is centuries old, but nobody sang it better than Susan Boyle. It's just fantastic. But can she keep that pitch and tombra while doing that? That's what I want to know. If she's not doing that in the recording studio, then right. she loses marks for me because everyone sings Old Lang Syne doing that. It's not as impressive if she's not got her arms crossed, shaking hands with someone. Should all acquaintance be forgotten? Mm, Hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on it's earth. It's the Lord's Prayer, and that's not a line. Earth. And of course, once again, Martina wouldn't all know old Lang Syne. Um, happy birthday to you. Happy birth... No, you're doing happy birthday there. That's turned into happy birthday. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. For all to say to be forgot, never gonna let you down. No, no, that's Rick Astley you're doing there. Na, 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 and we all love Vindaloo. You're doing Vindaloo. <laughs> That's Vindaloo by Fat Les you're doing there, Nana. Oops, sorry. We're doing Old Lang Syne. Oops, sorry. <laughs> oh, she's always doing Fat Les. One, two, three, four, five. The... <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Everybody. That's Mambo number five you're doing there. <laughs> That's Mambo number five you're doing there. For all the saints could be forgot, smooth like silk. No, that's that's Mr. Boombastic you're doing there. I'm gonna knock on wood with my cock. No, that's the man at Toby Carvery cocking on the counter with his knob. <laughs> oh. You're not coming next year, Nana. <laughs> well, it's this year now, isn't it? It's this year now. <clears throat> There's always that on New Year's Eve, isn't there? Once it's past midnight. Well, next year I'm going to... Oh, it's this year now, isn't it? Technically, yes. 
God, you're what? a bull. Do that again. Interrupt my speech again, and I will throttle you. I will pin you to the floor, hands around your neck, and I will squeeze the muscles and prevent you from breathing till your demise. Gone a knock. On wood. And, uh, no, no, no. That, that's a death threat, that. That's not old Lang Syne. <laughs> That's a fun. So we get a lovely. Uh, I gotta say, go I would do the rest of the episode just singing um, other bits of <laughs> songs to the tune of Old Lang Syne, <laughs> <laughs> and then correcting each other. It's been a lot of fun. I think we've done it too much already, but uh, I've had a blast. Don't know about you. <laughs> just a few more. Um, I can't. Even, I can't think of a single song on planet Earth. To yeah, we've done them all, haven't we? Today is going to be the day where I'm going to throw it back to you. Um, oh, no, that's Oasis, <laughs> that. That's not old Lang Syne. Well, maybe one too many, then. wonder what. Maybe one too many. One too many is done. He's right not using magic transport to get to the ministry because it does seem like you're taking the piss, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of logic, in it? I'm here for me trial, falling out of a chimney upside down. Ooh! <laughs> I'm here for my magical use trial, coming in on a Thestral drawn cart. Right, you're giving the wrong impression there, Harry. Right? <laughs> Comes through the window with Mary Poppins' his umbrella. <laughs> Was this your card? Right, sit down. <laughs> the trial started. All right, stop doing magic. Pulling the verdict out of a hat. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> That's what you're not supposed to do. Yeah, no, a bit, a bit of logic from Mr. Weasley. I'm glad he's finally uh, showing us that he's got a brain cell or two in that noggin of his. Mm. And they get to, uh, they go on the tube and then they get to this phone box, right? And it says, Harry didn't have a clue why they were in a phone box. Have a guess, lad. Have a guess. It's going to be magic, isn't it? Oh, what's that manky old boot? It's magic. It's going to take you somewhere. What's this green flame? It's magic. It's going to take you somewhere. Nine and three quarters. There's no such platform. Harry, you're a dunce. He's doing a spell on him. <laughs> He's doing a curse on He's him. He's doing a spell on him. <laughs> He's cursing me. I am, you're a twat. <laughs> He's bullying him. <laughs> He's copying what I say. Arthur Weasley's he's calling an escort's phone number in a, in a telephone box. Uh, Arthur, you said you were taking him to his trial. Oh. Uh -oh. I was calling for a good time. Harry's wand is taken off him. And this is to stop him using a Vada Kedavra in the courtroom. Because I yeah. would. We don't want you doing a Vada Kedavra on Amelia Bones. Do you have any uh, anything to say, Harry Potter? I've got something to say. If anyone sentences me guilty, I will use a Vada Kedavra on you all right now. Hmm. <laughs> I've got it locked and loaded. He's got it locked and loaded. We better be careful. Uh, I share uh, one with the Dark Lord. Mm. He shares it with the Dark Lord. Harry, you're a gimp. I don't know how that's relevant, but I just wanted to was, say it. I wanted to get it off I my chest. I did a gig um, on Friday night. Oh, in... yeah. Where the fuck was I? Where was I? You weren't in Goo Goo Gaga land, were you? Rottenstall. Lichtenstall. Rottenstall. 
a rotten stool, okay? It's it's full of manky fruits. It's rotten stool. And I'm doing one of my Harry Potter jokes. I do Harry Potter jokes when I'm not in Potter Vision. It's all I've got. It's... <laughs> People got me, oh, you must love Harry Potter. I hate Harry Potter. Always talking about Harry Potter. <laughs> um, do one of my Harry Potter jokes. And I go, um, if you didn't, I go, Tom Marvolo Riddle is an anagram of Lord Ian. I am, Lo- no, I am Lord Voldemort, yeah. yeah. And this woman shouts out. She goes, oh, spoilers. <laughs> I bet it got a laugh though, didn't it? <laughs> it did, and then I was laughing. I was like, "You man, it came out twenty-five years ago, you sausage!" Yeah, she was a funny cunt. She was very funny. Though. She kept shouting out at funny points. You know, like Hackler's funny, and even you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I love a genuinely funny heckle because I think, especially when I started off, because I was like, "Oh, you trying to." Uh, like fill up the time, you know, you have to do 10 minutes, 15 minutes. If someone got a good laugh, great. That's an extra joke I've not had to say. That's given me an extra 15 seconds, that. <laughs> that I don't have to do. And it was funny, at this gig, there was another heckler, this woman, this other woman, who looked like a great big cat with curly hair that had run of the house, is what she looked like. Like, she had, like, yeah. fangs and she had claws. Yeah. Um, and her hair was in like ringlets almost. She, she looks crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> she was heckling at terrible points. And I was going, like, <laughs> yeah, shut up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like shutting her down. Like, the other woman, I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> loving it. This other, the other one who's heckling, she's like, no good. And so I'm doing some stand up about, um, I don't like it when people show me photographs of their families. Yeah. And this woman joins in. She goes, I've got this bloke showing me a picture of his two daughters, like, you know, young girls. And she goes, were they naked? And I'm like... Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, don't do that, please. That's disgusting. <laughs> and she's like this. To Why a, would you even say she's that? She's to a mate, like, laughing, going... <laughs> yeah. And the room's looking at her like... Very funny. The room's looking at her like yeah. that. Had she had a few drinks, or was she just obnoxious? What? Yeah, she was bladdered. Yeah, was she? Yeah, I bet she was. Uh, bloody hell. But let me tell you this. They used to use owls yeah. in the Ministry of Magic, but now they use paper planes because the owls were shitting all over their desks. Yeah. Trying to train them up? <laughs> train them. Come on. I'd put a nappy on them. Oh, better better yet. Get some internet, some computers, emails. Oh, wouldn't that be easy? Things can be sent instantly nowadays. I fucking hate that. It's a weird... It feels almost like a snobbery that the magical community refuses to use technology at all. Yeah. The amount of emails I get at work. An email. I don't open any of my emails at work. And they go to me, hey, you've not been doing this? And I'm like, oh, have I not? And they go, yeah, we emailed you about it um, a month ago. I'm like, why don't you tell me? Yeah. (laughs) I think it's quite reasonable that uh, you should read your emails at work. Uh, I'm on team the company this time. Normally I'm on your side. It's very nasty when they make you move seats at work. It's very nasty when they make you do the post downstairs. Mm. But I think it's a reasonable expectation that you should read messages that they send you. Mm. I like the, uh, uh, the description of this ministry. It seems quite wonderful. It's like a long and splendid hall. We've got a Peacock blue ceiling. It just sounds like a wonderful office. Like one of them modern ones with vending machines and bean bags. Mm. You know, like one of them like Google offices where you can just like roll around on a bit of jelly and do your work. Yeah. 
Roll round on a Roll bit round. of jelly and do your work. I was at home. It's hard to do it, Google, isn't it? I, I visited, I was thinking of you, I was at my house the other day, and I had like an interaction with my dad that was similar to an interaction I'd have with you. Yeah. Because I was talking about um, something, and I used the expression, oh, you've got to blow smoke up their arse. Yeah. Yeah. And my dad goes, oh, I don't like that expression. Like that. And I went, fine, then, you've got to lubricate their elbows. And he goes, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Me and your dad have a lot in common, I think. We know you. No window in Arthur's office. Good Lord, what a sad little life. Yeah, it is sad, isn't it? I know, because everywhere else is so fancy, and then he gets that dingy office. Like outside, it says there's a there's a group of gold statues in a circular pool. Looks like sounds like the bloody Trafford Centre in Manchester. Sounds lovely, the Ministry mm. of Magic. Sounds like, do you know how nice the Ministry of Magic is? It's as near. It, imagine the Trafford Centre in Manchester. It's like that. And if you don't know the Trafford Centre, the Trafford Centre is like Las Vegas meets Johnny Vegas. It, it's brilliant. Glass, That's all you need to the know. The Trafford Centre is a cruise ship. Yeah, it is a cruise ship. Yeah, it is. It's a cruise ship on land. A land ship, maybe. But it's got shops. And it's got restaurants, and it's got people, and toilets. People. People. It's got people in it. There's people in it. Right, Harry, yes. It's a place of work. What? <laughs> Lovely. Merlin's beard. Yeah, they've got, and they've got, in the fountain, they've got a wishing well kind of thing for the fountain, but you put your coins in for St. Mungo's. Surely the ministry should be funding the hospital, not bloody people throwing coins into the fountain. Maybe that's to get them, like, extras. Do you know, like, we'll pay for your, like, treatment, but the donations get yeah. your Christmas crackers and they get you jelly. They get you jelly. The donations go towards the hospital DJ and uh, the man who dresses up as Santa and comes around the wards on Christmas Day. He's not allowed to come anymore. We've been told. <laughs> I think it's weird having like a, a a pool that you have to put coins in at a workplace. Feels more like a thing you'd have in a public space. Like imagine going into your office and somebody's there like collecting for the blind. No, well, that's all right, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm talking through it and it sounds fine when I actually say it. Imagine going into your office and there's uh, someone in there collecting for the blind. I wouldn't want to imagine that. That's the kind of thing that make me sick. Sometimes um, I give myself like what I think might be a funny opinion for the for the sake of the podcast, but when I say it, it sounds awful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it'd actually be fine if anyone was collecting for any, for any charity in uh, in the workplace. Let me make that clear. Um. So yeah. Merlin's beard, Arthur Weasley expresses at one point, doesn't he? Yeah, and you yeah, got yeah. me thinking, Merlin's beard must be the wizard slang or the wizard like form of the words fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then just use an old person and hair on them. It's not really much of a swear, is it? Like if I went, oh, Churchill's pubes, wouldn't be a bloody great swear, <laughs> great swear would Once, be. at a Potvision show, Lucas exclaimed, I'd accidentally put a little grey beard on my lap, and Lucas exclaimed, Merlin's Merkin, right? <laughs> and if a Merkin... And I would Merkin again. Merkin is a, um, a w- uh, means a wig for pubic hair essentially and yeah. he just just like that as soon as he saw it he goes Merlin's Merkin 
And I, I couldn't, but I, the audience weren't going crazy. I was like, what's the matter with you people? He's just, I was just off the top of the dome, that. That boy's good. It's Merlin's working. Yeah. And that, he goes, uh, we were on about this chapter being unnecessarily long and not needing to be there. Two pages are dedicated to Harry going down the lift. And them describing what's in every floor of the lift. It's like, level six, Department of Magical Transportation. Level five, Department of... You'd never get that in any other book. And then Sally went to the top floor of the, the shop. First floor, women's wear, outdoor and accessories. Second floor, children's wear and swimwear. You'd never have that in a book, would you? Why is it in this one? I don't want to read about the layout of the Ministry of Magic. It's boring. Do you agree or do you disagree? Did you find it interesting? I agree. Do you have a... Because Arthur Weasley has pictures of family and there's posters of Quidditch teams and stuff. Do you have anything personal on your desk at work? Do you have like a picture or... Something I've nice. got a hula lady that my sister Alice brought me back from Hawaii. And then when it reaches hey, Does when she it move hits around? Sunlight, it moves around. Uh, let's just say the desk they've put That's me in, nice. it's not moved around in a long time. Um, You've got an Arthur Weasley. I've on. got a, uh, a coaster that I bought myself that's, that says, Kick back, you've earned it. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, that's and, uh, nice. And some hair clippings. Lovely. It's really nice. Me, I've not set anything up yet. I might, I might stick a picture on the wall. Hey, but some of the kids have been drawing me pictures, and uh, I think I've got a new favourite spelling of my oh. name. So I got a picture, and it says um, in the middle, it says. Well, it's supposed to say Hare Kirkby. Right? Hare is spelt he H E R, and my surname is spelt K U G B I G. Kirkbig. I am Hare Kirkbig. <laughs> it's Hare Kirkbig. That's my new name. Kirkbig. Hare Kirkbig. Hare Kirkbig. Hare Kirkbig. Hare Kirkbig. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, it's my fault because I answer to it. I answer to it. I'm encouraging it. So, should I send you a link of me doing stand-up and you can play it to the children? I'd love that. Yeah, yeah. Send it to me and I'll uh, I'll stick it on for the kids. Mm. Instead of Bob Ross in their next art session, I'll just have you doing a 20-minute set. Yeah, that's not very distressing for him. Right. How many um, windowless rooms out of five are you giving this chapter? Um. Well, can I say one fun bit? Because I think you'd like this before you before you make me rate. Go on then. So they get a last minute memo, don't they? They say, right, last minute. Uh, it's not actually at this time. It's at however what time it is that was five minutes ago, and it's not in this courtroom. It's in the old courtroom, courtroom number ten. And they have to bloody rush. And Mr. Weasley is stressed. Yeah. And it says here, and I quote, Every time the lift stopped, Mr. Weasley cursed furiously. Yeah. Level four. Six. <laughs> Level three. <laughs> Level two. Wank. Level one. Shite. All right, you can ask me how much I'd rate it out of five. Now, I just wanted to say that bit. Um, how many windowless rooms are you rating it out of five? How many old courtrooms? Uh, oh, it just felt a bit like a waste of time. I do like the world building, but I feel like there needs to be a bit more substance to it as well in between the world building. Uh, so I found it very difficult to thoroughly enjoy 
So I'm going to give it one and a half old courtrooms out of five. Right. For me, I loved this chapter. It had everything I wanted in the chapter of the Harry Potter books. Descriptions, opinions, sallow skin, unnecessary flourishes. It was the... All of the world building I needed and very little talking from Harry Potter and all his annoying pals and acquaintances. It is for that reason I give this chapter five windowless rooms out of five. Right, are you ready for quiz? Quiz. Quiz. Quiz, quiz. Quiz, a man with a gun, a baby's been born, a dagger in the back, quiz. Question one, at what time did Harry awake? Oh, 5.30. Correct. Um, what did Harry wear? Jeans and a t-shirt. How is Ron Lay in bed? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm going to go with the classic, oh. it's either face down or spread eagled, I think. I'm going to go with spread eagled. No. So he's on his back with his mouth wide open, oh. and to use her term for this, she says he was effectively sex dolling. <laughs> yeah, I remember reading that bit. Okay, so question four. What was Mrs. Weasley wearing at breakfast? Oh, uh, was it a purple dressing gown? A quilted purple dressing gown. So I'll give you half a mark for that. Thank you. Um, And finally, what replaced owls at the ministry? Paper airplanes. Very good. Two and a half out of five. Three and a half, wasn't it? No. (laughs) On that then. Uh, <laughs> so that was the quiz. Are you doing the theme tune to end it? Yeah. Quiz. Quiz. A baby walking on two legs after being alive for a day. Quiz. That's it. <laughs> Lovely. Well, now it's time for the nation's second favourite segment. It's Hedwig's Droppings. We're not alluding to owl poo. We're not alluding to plopings. We mean the messages you send in when we allude to Hedwig's Droppings. What's in a beak this week? Well, we've got some lovely messages from the website and via email. So the first message is from Rebecca Davis on the website. And Rebecca Davis says, Congratulations on reaching 100 episodes. I can even hear your voices as I'm typing out these words because you both spend so long in my ears every day. We apologise for that, Rebecca. My question is, she says... She says, my question is, what would you both want Mrs. Weasley to knit onto a jumper for your Christmas present? Or would you prefer it as a surprise? How about you? What would you like Mrs. Weasley to uh, knit on your jumper for Christmas? Uh, Two words, cool boy. Yeah, I like that. Whereas I would have hashtag hang tums. Yeah, a little festive treat. Good, lovely. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Now, we've also had a message on the website from Mike Reeve. And Mike says... Hi, Pottervision boys. My brother Steve recommended the podcast to me and I'm loving it. I'm up to episode 13 now, but getting through them as fast as I can. I watched the nativity with my kids this week and Mr. Poppy reminds me of Hagrid, making friends with the kids and doing stupid things. Please give me a shout out, Mike. Mike, this is us calling you out. Yeah, we're going to fight you. Next Thursday, round the back of the flats. But yeah, hello, Mike, well, and thank you to Brother Steve for uh, recommending the podcast. Well, hey, I hope you're called you Steve Reeve. To... That's a brilliant name. Steve Reeve. Anyway, thank you. Uh, we've also had a message from Catalina from the website. She says, Dear Pottervision boys, 
if you could bring one person back from the dead in the Harry Potter books, who would it be and why? Love the pod from Catalina. So who would you like to resurrect that dies in the books? Cedric Diggory. Cedric Diggory. Whereas I personally, I'd like to revive Professor Bins. Yeah? So he can finally stop being a ghost, do his marking, and, you know, hit himself on the bottom if he wants to. I bet he's misdoing that. Now, we've also had an email from Carl and Shani Lindley. Now, Carl and Shani Lindley say, I'm currently on episode 27 and loving the podcast. I'm flying through them faster than Hagrid on a motorcycle with a miner in the sidecar. I have a question for you both, which I will hopefully look forward to being answered in around 70 episodes time. Where would you place Hagrid, Snape and Dumbledore in Snog, Marry, Kill? Now, he's got some extra information. He said, Hagrid, the pros are he's a homeowner and he's good with animals. The cons, uh, he prefers the company of young children. He's not good at keeping secrets and uh, he enjoys skinning animals and wearing their pelts. Snape, the pros are that surely he's wedged up. He has a lot of money. Uh, He knows that fame isn't everything. He's got his feet on the ground. But the cons are that he spends a worrying amount of time semi-naked with filch. Dumbledore, the pros are one of the... (laughs) It's a long email, I'll have to admit. One of the most powerful wizards to exist, but can't make his own hot chocolate. And he's got a sweet tooth, but the cons are he's a pink. So there you are, you've had... uh... (laughs) Snog, marry, kill. You've had pros and cons for all of the uh, the characters. Where are you putting them? Hagrid, Snape and Dumbledore. You go first, pal. All right. I would snog Snape, marry Hagrid and I'd kill Dumbledore. How about you? Um, I am a heterosexual male, so I couldn't do any with any of them. So you'd kill them all, would you? No, I just refuse to participate. <laughs> hey, that's a bit of fun, isn't it? Right, and then finally, uh, we've had an email from Ahmed. And Ahmed has sent us an email saying, Hello! So thank you for that email, Ahmed. <laughs> and we say, <laughs> hello, hello back. Well, that was the end of Hedwig's Dropping. This has been the Pottervision podcast. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, Like we said before, we're on tour. Most of the tickets are on sale. And what a lovely Christmas present for your friends and slash or family. Yeah, we're going all over the shop. England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. We would love to see you there. And uh, we'd love to (laughs) make the tour financially viable for us. So please buy a ticket. Uh, That'd be really lovely. Next time, we are on episode 102. We're on chapter 8 of The Order of the Phoenix, The Hearing. You have been a screen in the background, damp-walled Tom Lawrenson. And you have been a green-sleeved little lady, Lucas Kirkby. ba 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 old lang syne. Thank you for listening to the Pottervision podcast. The music was performed by Jack Evans. If you'd like bonus content and to support the show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash Pottervision.